There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Hi guys, I'm Grabby here, and this is a DC Legends video. In this video, um, I don't even know, man. Uh, <laughs> I am going to go through Ultraman. Now, this is a once bitten, twice shy situation for your boy. Your boy. Whenever I ever used your boy. I'll let your boy. Anyway, um, simply because when Ultraman first came out, I took him 7011 immediately. I was happy that he was in the game. I don't even know why. He's not a character that I particularly like that much, but I think his kit, like at the time, I'm trying to remember back to 2019, which feels like 300 years ago uh, in the before times, um, he was a, he was, his kit read awesome. I thought his kit looked cool. Uh, then it turned out he was just kind of booty. Uh, so now he's had a rework. His rework sounds good, but I've been there before. I've been bitten. So once bitten, twice shy. This week he has a PvP event. So I'm gonna go. So this is why I'm dropping the video now. So you can get my like views and impressions on him. These will be first impressions. I think I've allocated some of his. Yeah, I allocated some of the legendary points, but um I genuinely don't know. Well, I'm just gonna take him in to see. But before we get started. I drop DC Legends videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Ray Shadow Legends videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And there is a new game that I'm going to start. I think I'm actually going to record one today if it sticks, if I like it, because I'm going to try to take a different approach. It's going to be a game that I've never played before. It's called um, Marvel Revolution, I believe is the name of the game. It hasn't been released everywhere in the world just yet. Uh, I think it's only really in Canada right now. I'm in Switzerland, so... But... um. I'm going to record something on that as well, because I think it's going to be something I like. But anyway, we'll see if that becomes part of the channel later on. Sorry, got <laughs> got, got a sidetrack. But anyway, please like, please subscribe. And if you don't like it, hit subscribe, hit dislike. I'm all right with that as well. So let's go ahead and get into his kit. Um, the aesthetics wise, I mean, it's kind of blah. You know what, though? One thing about the aesthetic I don't like is the U. Like the U on his costume. Like. Why does he have this weird, angry eyebrows you? Like this, why can't this just be a regular, like, bold you? I don't I don't get it. It's, it looks booty to me. Anyway, so, and I'm not, part of my once bitten, twice shy thing may also contribute to why he won't be that great. I don't know. But I don't want to put any more resources into something that's already proven to be bad to me once before. Um... I mean, um, maybe I'm just thinking negatively, but I could take a mil four. I'm not going to waste 25k uh, in purple essence to do that when I have other characters I want to take L5 and rebirth. Uh, I'm not going to put more rings into him because blue rings are sacred. You know what I'm saying? They're the, they're the scarcest resource in the game. And I don't know if I want to put more rings into making him quote unquote better if he's going to be a trash. Tra uh, character anyway so anyway so that that's my thought process i'm gonna leave him right here where he is pvp and if i see some potential then i'll put some more resources into him but as for right now he's gonna be on probation so his a1 ultra strength special damage to an enemy if ultron is ultraman ultron <laughs> not a bad anime series um and not the ultron that you're thinking of but there's another whatever all right, so special, or is that Ultraman? Is that another Ultraman? Is that the one I'm thinking of? That other dude and Ultron is Marvel stuff? I'm getting way too sidetracked right now. Anyway, special damage to an enemy. If Ultra Ultraman is debuffed, transfer four debuffs to target. Otherwise, plus 50%, plus 50% damage. If Ultraman is still debuffed, transfer three debuffs to target. Otherwise, apply five crit damage down. So... You guys, you can see I took that first legendary point. Um, I don't even know what order I would take them in, but uh, but that's I've taken that one already. It sounds good. It sounds really, really good. It's just a matter of how well it works. Um, then his A2. His A2, I will, to be fair, his A2 was pretty good. I like the way the whole A2 and the taunt worked out. He wasn't the tankiest of taunters, though, so that created kind of a problem. But 
His A2, I think, worked really well beforehand. So anyway, gain taunt. Two intelligence ups, two strength ups, and two men's, which would all change to four stamina ups, four men's, and three int ups, if I were to ring this all out. Uh, gain overheal if Ultron, if Ultraman, Ultron. Why do I want to say Ultron so much? I think it's because of that Marvel game that I was talking about before. Blah. All right, so if Ultraman's, HP is over 50%, apply an overheal on a random ally. Now here's my question and I'm gonna try to keep an eye out for it. I don't like if, it, if it's only 50%. 50% isn't that much depending on his HP pool. As a matter of fact, I'll look back at his HP pool now and see how much HP he has. Um, he's sitting right at 34,000, 35,000. So, I mean, that's not in the level of the BP tanks, like your Bardas, like your Grundies, like your Clayface, and like your Steel. Steel coming up, I've been putting some resources into him. I like him already in certain ways. I'm not gonna release a video on him yet, but I'm liking Steel. Like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling Steel. I'm really happy about it because he was one of my favorite characters. Anyway, sorry, 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 sorry. Not about him. Uh, so like that 50% that 50 HP, I know that 5,000 doesn't seem like a lot, and maybe it's not, but I would I would like if that was both of them get the overheal then. He has a 50%, he has over 50% HP. And so then he and an ally both get an overheal. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. Maybe that's how it is and it's just worded differently here, but it looks like if he has enough HP, you're not going to get the uh, overheal on Ultraman, just on the other character. Um, and that is his legendary point. Now, Ultra Vision. Special damage to all enemies. Purge three random buffs from a random enemy. I wish that was purge three buffs from all enemies, especially with how much buffs are being used in the game right now. Wonder Girl is like your only hope against like those Terra Barda comps. If he was able to purge three, five buffs from an entire enemy team, each for each enemy, then that would already make him relevant in how PvP is played right now. So... He's missing out on that. 25% chance per lob ally to apply buff immunity to all enemies. I said this before when I first reviewed him. You got plenty of characters in the game right now that do that without conditions. Like you have Star Sapphire who will apply uh, buff immunity to all enemies and you don't need to have some kind of special uh, qualifier for it. So that's why I did not take that legendary point. In fact, that might be the last one I take now I'm thinking about it. P1A4. Uh, passive ability. When an enemy dies, 55% chance to reset cooldown of Kryptonite Recharge. I do like that ability. Um, also gain three mins and use Kryptonite Recharge at the start of battle, which means that he'll, he'll become a zero turn taunter. That's why I took that one. If you're looking for a taunter, quite frankly, that is the one I would take first. Um, let me go. I think, yeah, I think that would be the one that I would take is I would take his four first, but I'm kind of into this taunters thing. But for PvP and for PvE, if you're trying to get through some content and if he can take enough damage for you, 35k and HP isn't exactly something to sneeze at, so he might be really good and tanky, um, that might be an option for you. Uh, then I would lean towards the... It's a toss-up between the A1 and the A2 to me, in my view. And then down here to the 5, let's, let's see what this says first. Uh, passive ability... If a teammate is debuffed at the end of wait, did I, I did do that right? Okay. If it, if a teammate is debuffed at the end of their turn, fifty five percent chance to transfer uh, three debuffs to a random enemy. Uh, transfer two extra debuffs to a random enemy if the teammate is a villain. Like this sounds really good, and I am so 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 tempted to put more rings into the chances because fifty five percent chance. I mean that's you know just a flip of coin. Same thing with this corruption transfer. If I put, you know, if I if I bring this all the way out, then that makes it a 75% chance that all allies will transfer debuffs. Like the more I'm talking about it, that all allies will transfer four debuffs at the end of their turn. And then six if it's Lex, for example. That is actually pre the more I think about it, if a teammate is debuffed at the end of their turn. You're transferring debuffs back. He might be sick. That might be sick. Um, how many rings do I have? I'm not gonna do it because I only got nine right now. I'll have there's a ring day coming up tomorrow, so I'll do it then. This for the 10% damage I would ring out if you're looking to ring out. 
And then this ability, if you're looking to ring him out, his taunt, I think is actually really, really good. So I would ring that out as well. Um, if you don't have any other, and a lot of this is predicated on me having other options. If he's your only taunter, if you're new to the game, then I get why you would put more resources into him. If you have options, then I necessarily wouldn't. And then on his, uh, on his uh, legendary point for the P2A5. When Corruption Transfer activates Ultraman, uses Ultra Strength on a random enemy if teammate is a villain. So if the teammate is a villain, then he'll attack and that'll transfer more debuffs to that to that enemy. Um, I mean, it seems to work well. Like you, I'm, I read it and it seems cool and I wish I could remember his old kit. I'm bad at that, but I wish I could remember his old kit because his old kit read pretty cool to me too. And I'm wondering if I should just put some more resources into it. Because I really do like the idea that every teammate will transfer debuffs at the end of their turn. 75% chance. That ain't bad. All right. Well, let me try to... Mm, I'm so hesitant right now. I don't want to waste my rings on it because I got steel like sitting on the corner, like steel is right here. And I just burned all my gems and we should get some gems from that from that uh, raid, which was full of bugs and problems. But, ooh, -wee. and here's the other thing too, given the other, like I don't care about this L, this uh, legendary point. Um, this one is kind of okay, but the whole if teammate is a villain thing draws me away from it because I mean, Terra is being used a lot, right? But then her, but then corruption transfer wouldn't work for Terra because Terra has her own meltdown thing, so she purges all her debuffs anyway. So that that's out the window. Um, trying to think of others: Barda, not a villain; uh, Azrael, not a villain; um, Blackfire, maybe. But I haven't even maxed out my Blackfire yet. Blackfire got put on the bench because Steel came out, so. I don't know. Let me just put him in. Let me just put him in. See what happens. We'll do a couple battles here. See how this goes. Um, but I'm skeptical only because, and I mean, some of you are probably like listening to this and thinking like, why are you so skeptical? Blah, 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 blah. Only because of what happened in the past. That's what, that's what has me worried right now. So if I'm looking at this team that I'm facing right now, I want to be fast. And this is the other thing. Like, you have to... Oh, you heard my neck pop? Yeah. Old age. Um, so looking at this team right now, the first thing I think is I have to put Martian Manhunter and Black Flash in if I'm going to put in Ultraman because Ultraman is going to be the taunter. Black Flash, I need to neutralize in some way, shape, or form. Azrael is going to be a problem. And as my friend... Uh, I can't remember his name. I think it's Adam. Uh, as one of my subscribers always says, if I'm, oh, maybe it's not him. Um, don't ignore Azrael or you get screwed. Uh, what do I do then? Because right now, the way I'm looking at building this team is going to be Terra, Ultraman, and Martian Manhunter, and then Black Flash. Terra for the, to block Enrage, and then also for the can't miss to take out Harley Quinn. Um, but then nobody's there to take care of Azrael. You know what? Let's do it anyway. Let me just be stubborn and stupid. I'm allowed to be stupid and stubborn. That's fine. Ain't no worries. All right. So let's go ahead and go energy here. We got villains. So we're going to plop in Terra. We're going to plop in Ultraman. And the thing is, is I would love for them to have more debuffs, but they're not going to have debuffs if I put Terra in. So that kind of defeats the purpose of the main thing in his kit. Uh, let you know. Let me see what this other team is looking like. Let me see what they're working with. Uh, this other Martian man on the team. They also don't have a lot of debuffers, so I feel like I should get past these teams first and then do the thing. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and work through these teams real quick, and then I'll come right back. All right, so we're done with that. Uh, didn't take too long, but of course there was the classic loss of sync having to restart thing which what's the day of playing dc legends without there being some kind of sync issue and you having to restart like of course for such a small co corporation like wb of course they're not going to be able to have developers uh who are able to handle these problems uh easily all right so you know what all right let's see nope not really a debuff squad plus 
I don't know what Ultraman is supposed to do in that situation. The more I think about Ultraman, the more I'm thinking that he is very much a niche situational kind of situational kind of um, tune. And the, the team I'm looking for really is that, you know, black, that White Lantern, Cersei team or whatever. But I mean, I guess a Harley Quinn team could do. Um, yeah, I guess a Harley Quinn team could do. So let's see. So first we have Ultraman. I'm going to take Terra out because though the more I think about it, they may be able to work together. Like she kind of hinders what he's supposed to be doing. And part of what I want to see is the transfer of those debuffs onto the enemy team. Um, since Enrage is only like a one turn debuff, if does that even transfer? There's another question. Because it will have to expire at the end of the teammate's turn, right? So anyway, all those questions aside, um, I guess what we can do is I'll go ahead and put Owlman in since he is a villain. I'll put Lex Luthor in since he is a villain. Um, and then, well, see, he's supposed to be the taunter, so I don't need a taunter in there. But who's my real damage dealer in this situation? Who is going to handle Arcus for us? So let's go ahead and go here. Do I have anyone here that I want to? I mean, I could put Black Flash in there. That'll help us with Arcus and everything else. All right, so let's see. Let's see how this goes. The one time I've ever wished for Harley Quinn to enrage us, right? So let's see if, like I, the thing I'm trying to keep an eye on isn't even if he's good or not. And in fact, I'm gonna slow it down just a bit to 2X because I want to see, so yep, turn zero taunter, I love that. We get enraged. Uh, the enrage did not transfer on any of, okay, no, they did. But I don't know who transferred it, if it was Ultraman or if it was, um, Owl man, because they expired, but they did. They did uh, transfer the enrage. He's got Doom now. Forgot about Doom on um, Black Flash. So given, oh, I didn't even hit auto yet. So given um, the criteria here, whoever he attacks next with his A one will get Doom. That's oh wow. Okay, that. Mm, uh that was cool ish but how strong what no it was a nine point team so that was really they were like what 30 31 000. um that aoe hit harder than i expected i mean but they were already low help but still it hit harder than i expected okay um i like seeing the debuff transfer i wish that it had been a more uh i wish it had been a longer battle get a better feel for it um, I think we're going to go ahead and go against this team because I do, now that I remember that Black Flash has that, uh, Doom, I want to see the Doom get transferred, but by the time the Doom gets transferred with four turns, maybe three turns. Oh, and that's another thing too. If the Doom gets transferred, does the count reset to four turns before it blows or if it gets, okay, so that one didn't transfer, that one didn't transfer and he just killed her. Um, with that Doom, does it reset the Doom, like, turns? Because, you know, it takes four turns to take out Doom, right? It takes four turns. So if I transfer Doom after having had it for two turns, does that then mean that, and I got to attack somebody else, but I can't attack anybody else. Does that then mean that it starts over the Doom at four? Or does it, or is it like hot potato? Like, I just transferred it over to you, and so now you got to worry about it two turns, and then... Can you transfer it back to me? Do you have an Ultraman on your squad who will transfer it back to me before it goes off? Like that would be, that'd be kind of cool. That would actually be kind of cool if you got Hot Potato Doom around. Um, I really, mm, there's no way for me to figure that out because I don't think I have a team that I can go against that's going to be like, uh, he's going to wipe him out here, right? Yeah, he wiped him out. And you guys think I'm impressed with him wiping out like a bunch of physicals and he's an energy? He was not that good. Um, yeah. But now I'm wondering, is the Doom a hot potato situation? Oh, we're down to three turns. Ultraman toss it back out, and now they have to deal with it for two turns. Like they have two turns to get rid of the, the Doom, purge it somehow, or else tough. You know what I'm saying? So like that would be cool. That would be cool. Or if you had two Ultramans, one on each side, and they're just like knocking it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like a tennis match until it blows up. It's very Mario Kart. No, not Mario Kart, Mario Party. Um 
I'm really curious about that now. Can I get that to work? Well, let's see what this team. We'll probably lose this just because of the, the, the composition. But I'm really, really curious. Plus, those tunes that fall under both categories, like your Catwoman, like your Black Flash, they're both hero and villain within the game. White Lantern Sinestro is another one. Um, I guess the rules for the, the villain transfer applies to them as well. Oh, well, there you go. See, I knew that would happen. Um, but yeah, so like for those characters specifically, they they probably they also fall in the villain category, villain category, which makes him and Black Flash a pretty good pairing uh, because of the speed. And then Black Flash he can get all the debuffs he wants, but he's a villain, so he'll transfer six of them. Uh, let's see. What about this matchup? All energy. Nobody on there really debuffs except for the deep, except for the buff of me or the uh, silence and the buff immunity that you get from um, Lex. You get a stun from Green Lantern, however hard to transfer that. And then, ooh, let's go for another team. We'll go for one more, then I'll call it a video. Um, the verdict's still out. I might actually make another video on him because I think. I think, I think, I think he might be really good in certain, I mean, this team doesn't debuff. Aside from the fact of being terrifying, it's not a debuffing team. Um, I think he might be legit, situationally speaking. A lot of these teams I'm having to skip over because given the situation that they're in, they won't, it won't work. But situationally speaking i think he might actually be able to do the thing all right so let's um go with this team and then we'll call it but yeah i think he might be good i think i'm gonna have to do some more i think i'm gonna have to use him a little bit more and i'm also wondering how because i haven't seen it yet like he's of course oh no enraged thanks harley quinn uh oh but there are the intelligence downs so I'm wondering, ah, okay, that did answer one question. I was wondering how tanky he was as a taunter in terms of what he can survive. Um, I'm almost positive that my clay face can survive a double tap from Arcus, but he did not. Now, there's that 5K difference, like I said. So um, this team is definitely not gonna win. All right, so I think that'll call it, but I think that for Ultraman himself, um, He's very good. So I think he'll be good. Like, in fact, not just good, but like a good bit above average in certain situations. Like, not for every single thing. But that debuff transfer did seem to work well. I need to put some more rings in him to see if it works for the other team or for the uh, for the teammates. He seemed to hit pretty hard. His AOE seems to hit harder than it did before. Um. I'm leaning towards liking him. I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm gonna probably, I might even do another video this week. I might do a double drop of a video on Wednesday. I shouldn't make that promise, but I might. I might do two videos on Wednesday because I already had one lined up, but I can drop another Ultraman video just to see. You know what, I'll do that. This will be part one of the Ultraman saga. So, thank you guys for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.